Hello everybody and welcome back to Rebellious Menstruation. This is a bloody tale on hyster hysterectomies and the slavery legacy and this is part two in the series. Um, this is kind of a continuation on the previous hysterectomy video which I'll link here up on screen um, on the left if you're interested. Uh, which was predominantly about the medical unnecessity of hysterectomies in the vast majority of cases. This one is about the is about experimental hysterectomies performed most often without anesthesia on black and brown bodies in the U.S. Uh, most infamous was the American physician James Marion Sims. Um, he is the exceptionally controversial father of modern gynaecology. He was in particular developed, um, he in particular developed the foundation surgical techniques for the repair of vesiovaginal fistulas, which is essentially an abnormal fistula between the bladder and the vagina, allowing the continuous involuntary discharge of urine into the vaginal vault. This was often a severe complication of obstructed or difficult childbirth. He perfected this technique by operating without anesthesia on enslaved black women. Sims also created a revolutionary tool such as the modern day speculum and the Sims position uh, which use, was used to examine the vaginal wall and vaginal wall prolapses, which is kind of where women are um, laying on their side with a knee up and forward. So, of course, once he perfected this technique, um, Sims decamped to New York to practice on white women or to treat white women. Um, I did note that some of the articles that did mention that anesthesia was rare, except um, was it was very rare and wasn't necessarily always used. In New York, he opened the first woman's hospital where his medical treatments remain controversial. Of course, this raises ethical concerns, bearing in mind the cultural context that the use of slaves in the South for medical research was uncontroversial at the time. There are also conflicting reports regarding the anesthesia um, with Sim stating in a public lecture in 1857 that he never used anesthesia in fistula surgery for any woman. Um, so this included black, brown and white women as it was not painful enough to justify the risk of using it. Um, so this kind of goes back to what I said before that uh, anesthesia was quite new and quite rarely used and there would have been cases where anesthesia would have uh, killed people. However, he did use opium in the aftercare scenario with everybody. In all of his cases, including the slaves. Uh, movements in New York uh, have successfully had his statues removed in 2017 and 2018 due to the ethical breaches of operating on slaves. As traumatizing as this is for surgeries on women um, continued. During the 60s and 70s sterilizations were performed on First Nations Native American women and girls as young as 11 and were, had far-reaching uh, and had far-reaching consequences not only in terms of the birth rate directly decreasing um, up to 25% of First Nations women between the ages of 15 to 44 were forcibly sterilized, um, but massive socio-cultural effects as these women lost economic and political power by being infertile and the significant detrimental effect of native culture becoming potentially extinct without heirs. From the 60s, First Nations Indigenous Canadians from various nations were forcibly sterilised. Often IQ tests were administered to establish mental deficiency as a diagnosis for sterilisation, while campaigns were run to have legislation appealed, um, which it eventually was in the 70s, forced sterilisations were still happening in as late as 2017. A class action lawsuit was raised in 2018 in Saskatchewan, 
I'm probably saying that wrong, I apologise. Uh, policies of sterilisation in both cases have been accused of being a continuation of genocide and unlawful research in two women's bodies that have been continuing for a while. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your morning, afternoon or listening. <laughs> uh, enjoy your morning, afternoon or evening depending on where you are in the day. And I of course will see you next video. Bye everyone.